Educators and students use terms like data, information and knowledge, often without a deep appreciation of their meanings and differences. The lack of conceptual clarity regarding these words is one cause of students' failure to develop better ways of understanding knowledge. And at the root of this problem is this threshold concept of knowledge fluidity. Let's unpack this idea a bit. Knowledge fluidity refers to the instability of knowledge. We can, for example, learn something more precise about a topic, begin to question what had been held as certain, and reject earlier beliefs that we once held as true. Note the human agency involved in this fluidity. It's always someone making these changes. This point is important. Naive thinkers often believe in a world that is already known by earlier people or is just waiting to be discovered. They operate on the unquestioned assumption that the world is real and is unalterable. Sophisticated thinkers understand the human nature of knowledge and with that understanding they are able to view knowledge as being contingent on a human need to improve our knowledge for some directed purpose. If a person believes that the world is just out there and humans can directly comprehend the world, that person will not see any need to interpret the world. To this person, interpretation is an unnecessary action or it is not even considered at all. Yet all communication is done through symbols where a physical thing represents a conceptual meaning. But symbols only work if there is a shared understanding of what those symbols stand for. Let's look at two different ways of expressing this, as each of the different ways may bring a different perspective on the topic. To some, a data point is an experience of something in the physical world. If I look at a person and perceive his height, that perception is a data point. I can feel that point, and if I reflect on it, I can draw some understandings about the height from the data point. However, in order to communicate the height, I need to translate my perception into some form of symbol that can be communicated. You can't feel my perception directly, so I express it in the form of a measurement. Now, it's critically important to realise that the measurement is not the height itself. It's a translation of the perception into a shareable symbol. Now we have moved from the data point of the perception into the information in centimetres, feet and inches, or Japanese sun, or whatever. How I choose to translate the perception is also important, but for the moment, let's call this information. When your ears or eyes receive this information, you can make sense of it. Now you have the knowledge in your mind. Then you may add the item, wow, that's tall, or he'll have difficulty finding clothes, or something else to the knowledge structure on top of the base information. Another way of looking at the data information knowledge set is to see the data as a translation of perception and information, as a connection of that data inside its wider category. So for example, if today is 7 degrees Celsius, a data point, then that data can be added to the body of information about the local weather. In this view, knowledge is divided into know that today is 7 degrees and know how to make sense of that information. In terms of, in terms of what exactly? Well, that's up to you. And the topic of knowing that and knowing how is the subject of another video.